Although you would typically associate frequency separation with portrait retouching, it can be useful for any type of imagery where you need to separate tone and texture to retouch them separately. A great example of this is with landscape imagery, where you might have lens flares streaking across portions of the image. Now trying to use something like the in-painting brush tool on this area would not yield a very good result, since you have complex brick and foliage patterns that are individual and very hard to recreate. Instead, we'll use frequency separation. This will split our pixel layer into low frequency and high frequency detail. So to get started, let's move across to the layers panel and I want to duplicate my background pixel layer. I can do this on Mac using Command J or on Windows, Control J. And I'm just doing this so we have a copy of the image for comparison later on. So on the duplicated copy, I can then run the frequency separation filter by going to Filters, Frequency Separation. Now, as we'll see from the split preview, the default settings provide some distinction between the texture and detail on the high frequency layer and color and tone on the low frequency layer. What we need to do, however, is bring as much textural detail as possible over to the high frequency layer. We want this low frequency layer to be as flat as possible and remove the distinct patterns of the brickwork and foliage. Now, the problem here is that when we do this by adjusting the radius slider, we start bringing through the color detail of the lens flare as well. Even when lowering the radius, this still isn't going to work because we've got that hint of color on the high frequency layer. The solution is to switch the method over to median. And we can even bring the radius down, say to around 2.5 pixels. This gives us a much stronger assignment of detail to the high frequency layer, and all that is left on the low frequency layer is this blocky color and tone. Crucially, as we can see, there is very little to no color bleed of that lens flare. So with this ideal separation achieved, let's click apply. And then what we need to do is make sure we have the low frequency layer selected. We will choose the clone brush tool from the tools panel on the left. Then on the context toolbar, we can take the hardness down all the way to 0% for a nice soft edged brush. And then at this stage, we want to option click on Mac or alt click on Windows to set our sample point on some of this brick detail down here. And then we just want to brush across like so. Now you'll notice by default, I keep having to option click or alt click to reset that sample point because the sample point moves as I brush. What we can do instead is uncheck aligned on the context toolbar, set our sample point, and now every time we let go of the mouse button, that sample point resets. So this is much more useful for repeat clone brush strokes. We could also just try sampling from a different area just to get a bit of variation. Like so. Okay, and let's just move on to the foliage. So I'm going to sample from an area above and then below. And just across here, we've got a little bit of an area that we need to retouch. So let's once again sample and just clone over that area. Then we'll move over to the lens flare over here. And I'll just increase my brush width using the right square bracket key. Let's again sample and I'm just click dragging in succession. Then just sampling from other areas just to randomize the result that we're getting here. Okay, so just to put this into perspective, let's just switch away to the view tool temporarily 
Then select both the low and high frequency layers and hide them. So now, in context of the original image, we can show these layers again and see that actually, although it could use some slight tidying up here, we've managed to achieve a good result very quickly. Now let's look at a more complex example. So here, the entirety of the rock detail in the bottom right is covered in this red flare. Now the flare is also reducing contrast, which we will need to tackle after we've done the initial retouching. So as we did with the previous example, let's duplicate our background pixel layer, go to filters, frequency separation, change the method to median, and this time we're going to bring the radius up to quite a high value, around 33 pixels or so, seems to be a good value. So we've got all of the detail now across on the high frequency layer and all of this flat, blocky color detail on the low frequency layer. So let's click apply. And again, we just want to select the low frequency layer, so we're working on it. Choose the clone brush tool over here. Our hardness is still set to 0% from the previous image. So now I just need to make my brush just big enough for the area I want to sample from, which is this tone on the rock here. So I will option click on Mac, alt click on Windows, and again, like before, just uncheck aligned up here. So now I want to just go through and single click. The reason I'm single clicking is because we just want to sample from this particular area now. We don't want the sample area to move at all, which would be the case if we were click dragging on the clone brush tool. So I'm just going through quickly, just blocking in the basic replacement color detail for now. And then we will tidy it up in a minute. Okay, almost there. Now we have some of the foliage up here, so I will reduce my brush width. Option click or alt click, sample from an adjacent area. And once again, just use the single click technique to go over this. And just looking at this area, we perhaps have a little bit of red lens flare down here still. So let's again sample from a fairly neutral area and just go over that. Now we may also want to isolate the low frequency layer to see more clearly the distribution of color. To do that, you can option click on Mac or alt click on Windows on the thumbnail of the layer you wish to isolate. And here we can see that we've actually got some pretty good coverage. I could just sample from this gray area and perhaps just provide a bit more coverage over some of the areas that still have a hint of red in them, like so. But overall, we do want to maintain some variety in color for the sake of realism. So I'm not too concerned with the variation that we're seeing here. To come out of isolation mode, just click on any other layer in the layer stack. Now, we do have this green patch down here in the bottom right. This is actually on the high frequency layer. So I will option click on Mac, alt click on Windows quickly, just to isolate the high frequency layer. And with my clone brush tool, what I actually want to do is bring the hardness all the way up to 100%, since we're now dealing with the textural detail. So we don't want soft brush edges, as this will result in blurry areas around the cloning. So I've just sampled, from an adjacent area, and I can just clone that in there by single clicking. Finally then, coming out of isolation mode once again, we do need to address the contrast. So a really quick way to fix this 
is just above the two frequency layers in the layer stack, add a brightness and contrast adjustment, bring the contrast up, perhaps to around 30% or so. Then we want to invert the mask for this adjustment layer. So to do that quickly, we just go to layer and invert, or you can use the shortcut, which is command I on Mac, control I on Windows. Then we just need to select the paintbrush tool, take the hardness down to 0% on the context toolbar. Let's have a nice big brush width and across on the color panel, just set our color to white, then brush in. So effectively, we're now just filling this area of the brightness and contrast adjustments mask with white, which means the effect is now showing through over this area. So here's the before and then the after. And there we go. So let's just compare our retouching with the original. Not a bad result at all, considering what we've had to work with. And we really would have struggled to achieve this without frequency separation. Anyway, that was a quick look at frequency separation and using the median method for retouching lens flare artifacts. Thank you for watching.